but also capturing again a national title. And here we go. Opening tap is controlled to the Musketeers. Our officiating crew is a solid one. Jeff Clark, John Gaffney, and Matt Potter. An extremely important first four minutes for Xavier to kind of establish how they want to play in a beautiful <laughs> move and patience. <laughs> Let me show him go. Huh? It, it is, but that, listen, can you score in the paint? That helps you control defense more importantly. You're setting your defense. You're not allowing this UConn team, which has been very successful in transition, to get out and run against Xavier. Well, we both have UConn a lot this year. There's such a beautiful cut, extra pass. Klingon misses from point blank range. Should have stuffed it. Went up with a little too soft a lay in. And uh, went off spying on the front rim. But this is a Huskies team that when they play the way they played against Xavier in that last win, as Usman knocks one down, no one's going to beat it. I mean, they can be brilliant. you got to score with them if you're going to beat them. But you can't give them easier opportunities. And I talked about it in two games, 47 points in transition by UConn. Offensive rebounds. You know, they're poking enough in this right here in their half-court set to give them some other opportunities to score outside of that. Now well, this could be with a conversion on this end of the floor this time the perfect start for Sean Miller's squad. Did not write a script any better in the first four minutes. Hello, how do you do? Olivari sending a quick message, and it's a touchdown to nothing. And we're at quite two minutes deep. But well, and the reason why Sean Miller said this is very important to start because the last game was a big blow okay, at UConn. And you didn't want to have that linger over into this first game. And we can see these young men have come out focused, poised, and ready to play. Castle, yeah, so he's off the mark. Who's in a great position that time. Keeping clean off the glass. That pass a little too strong. And it'll go the other way. There's Denny. The coach of the year in the Big East, and you know that that says a lot because when you're the best, it's hard to win that award in this conference. Normally, it would go to the team that had the least expectations. I know probably a number of people thought maybe Kim English, possibly Seton Hall's head coach, has done such a great job. Shot has done a remarkable job. Yeah, but we go 18 and two. Yeah, <laughs> the Big Absolutely. East conference, brother. Yeah. Uh, you're gonna get the nod for yeah. coach of the year and a little travel right there by Klingon and how about the job Sean Miller has been able oh. to do with this team, especially with the injuries. You're playing more freshmen, you know, in regards to that. You know, not only did he lose the two big guns in Hunter and Freeman, and Freeman yeah. but he also lost Dalen Swain to an appendectomy at the very end of the year. He would have gotten oh 15 minutes or more in this postseason tournament. They are trying to get above 500 for the year and have some postseason life, even if in the NIT. Their strength of schedule is off the charts, too. Up against the clock. Djokovic with a run. Nice work on the offensive blast by the big fella. Yeah, good activity this time by Xavier. The moving ball has been great to the punch and beautiful. How many times have we seen it, Tim? Well, an offensive rebound, you don't get matched up and then your opponent is able to take advantage of being a 10 0 start right now for the Musketeers. Yeah, the Rice transfers hit two of them from downtown. Could not ask for a better start. For the upset minded Musketeers, here's Spencer into the painted area. You're looking for one major difference cosmetically on the floor, it's been him. Coming over from Rutgers, not only his offense, but his defense. But his playmaking ability, and I don't think Coach Dan Hurley kind of understood what he was getting with Cam Spencer in regards to the total package. Because yeah. when you see Cam Spencer, you think about shooting three-point shots. But his ability to attack off the dribble, to finish inside, and to create plays has been a blessing to go along with his ability to move without the ball and not get an open three. Hassan Diara has checked in, Klingon out of the game, so they go a little smaller now. Samson Johnson also in there. More energy, I think that's what Dan Hurley was looking at with this substitution. He didn't like the body language from the starting five, and now we input some energy, and Tristan Newton immediately is able to get to the basket. 
Tristan Newton had a remarkable year. You could argue that he could have been player of the year in this league. But there are so many on the Connecticut team that average in double figures and have made contributions. It could have been a clean sweep at yesterday's awards banquet held by the Big East. But how about this? Pure stroke early, Jimmy. Leave it up. Let it go. Believe in what you do. And right now, already seen that he's been able to get the bigs out and force Connecticut to go a little smaller. But you know, it's more so, I think, the beautiful play right there getting Tim Spencer a shot. I think it was more so the lack of energy is why Dan Hurley kind of got clinging out of the game. He right, wasn't just, happy with some of the finishes yeah. he had inside. So not so much more what Xavier did to him. It was uh, probably the lack of effort right, to send the message to Klingon what he needs to do. Well, it's not uncommon when the team that played yesterday and played well and was forced to to win has a smoother start on day two than the team with fresh legs on the floor for the first time in this tournament. Yeah, great point, especially in the afternoon. Beautiful point. Now, see, that's where UConn has been dominant against Xavier. Off of the miss, listen, they've had 47 transition points in two games versus Xavier. That time, Samson Johnson was able to beat everybody on the court, be patient, and score inside. The ball was kicked. Out of bounds to Xavier. When transition, Tristan Newton has an opportunity because no pr no pressure was on him. And Samson Johnson did the correct thing, which was you defend on the other end, but you run the court right down the middle, then you get rewarded for that. Playing the role this year of what Klingon did last year when Sonogo would start, and he'd come in. Claude with a good move. A little too hard off the window, though. Spencer for three. Johnson the rebound. Gets the recycle. Hand. Rebound. Oh, he's going to get a third opportunity with a recycle. Caravan. So nine unanswered now for the defending national champs. And Sean Miller takes a quick shot treatment timeout. Same way at Seton Hall. It's not so much what he says, but how he looks like while he's saying that. That's right. Yeah. Little head nod <laughs> to the side. Clark against that roadblock. Decided to give it up. Defense. That's how Xavier played pretty much on the perimeter game in transition. Perfect pass from Diara right to Johnson. And the speed with which he runs the floor is a big. He's already made a difference since coming in for Donovan Clinton. Chase Alberry hitting him off that line, forcing him to move in. They're pitching a shutout now in the last four minutes. And Danny Hurley is getting what he wants now. 13 straight plus 11 since Johnson came in. Well, excellent secondary break opportunity right there by Utah. He gets a stop on the opposite end. Garibane showing his ability to beat you off the bounce and finish inside. Claude counted on a foul. Namicha in there to provide a little bit of steering for him with a pick down in the painted area. This is where you can be a little bit more successful against this UConn half-court defense. Push it up quick and now you can exploit and find those little gaps. And <laughs> Tan early right there like, are you kidding me? But I think Desmond Claw did get hit on the arm. Yeah. Big body at 6'6". Six, six. Yeah, and Namicha, while providing that uh, block, like it was a sweep, did have uh, his shoulder on a shoulder as well. I think that got Dan's attention too. We're tied at a Baker's dozen apiece. Caravan. That one was offline from the start. Djokovic the rebound. Well, they love to get downhill. Claude, particularly. Out of bounds, it will belong to the Musketeers with 10 to shoot. Cam comes back on the floor, and Newton will take a seat for Connecticut. 
so many interchangeable parts with UConn. They stay so fresh, and, and your guys, you're the opposition, have to go a lot more. Look at that. Started 0-4, but they've been outstanding since. A bailout foul that time. I mean, Olivari was in all kinds of trouble. Yeah, but at that time, he, he was able to turn the corner. And, you know, go back to UConn defense, too. It, the interchangeable parts because they have positional size, so they're rarely in mismatch situations, even if it's a big. And they do an excellent job of pressuring the ball, but I'd love to see Xavier right here move it, get inside, and, and that's to take advantage of UConn's mystery. That time the pass was able to be entered inside, which you don't want, mm -hmm. and you have to as a team. UConn has a strategical error. You got to make them pay for it, and they did. Musketeers reclaim the lead by a deuce. Johnson, offensive rebounding can be such a key for this UConn team. They can dominate the glass. Castle fouled as a baseline blast went awry. Claw came over a little bit late. A quality start to a big time quality event. The Big East Tournament. Quality yeah, yeah. Upsetting the screen, letting UConn feel you. In that situation, after the great success of Chris Mack when he was head coach and he vacated for Louisville, it took a few years, but man, oh man, did they hit the lottery when they were able to get Sean Miller back for a second act as head coach. He is just a dynamic head coach in every respect. It's hard for me to think of him as a 55-year-old because he was such a great player. Enzi has checked in, number 15, and a little dribble handoff to Oliveri. He kind of the tip and roll so well. Oliveri gives it up late. That's three up against the clock. Hey, outstanding patience that time by Xavier. That time, Green able to catch. Santiago kind of got out of play by jumping. And Green was able to calmly put the shot clock going down, knock in that three. That shrug of the head by Hurley afterwards, like that defense played so well, and he gets that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Let's go over to Christina Payne. Yeah, and that last time out, Dan Hurley said to his players, and you want some more physicality defensively. He said, guys, you got to be more disruptive. Show your body when you're guarding non-shooters on the offensive end in transition. He said, stop running for threes. We got to drive, sprint to the paint, and then spray out for a three set. What? Uh, go to the basket in transition? Not spray out for three? That's old school right Really? There. Really? Yeah, that's, that's old school right there. I love it, though. Oh, a nice little teardrop from Olivari. And they extend their lead to a half dozen. He's got eight. Looks like the Musketeers plan on hanging around today. Get off to a good start. You see the ball pull in early. Trust me, your confidence level will be high. Speaking of high, excellent dribble handoff play. And this one be with UConn and fell asleep in transition and got away with it. They're going to force you to guard all of the real estate on the court. This will be a lot of movement off the court. Beautiful pass inside the play. And if he got the memo while he was on the bench, you better run the floor for me, big fella. Or you better finish, too, and get it inside. Stop, you know, being soft with the basketball. Go up and be physical. Use that seven-foot frame. To finish inside and that time, no hesitation. Beautiful pass by Stephon Castle. Well, Danny Hurley wouldn't say soft in the huddle, would he? <laughs> well, I mean, it may start with that letter. Yeah, I don't, you yeah. know, a couple of things behind it. <laughs> <laughs> so Green made his first, but has missed his last two from deep. Connecticut shoots for the lead on this possession. What a freshman season for Castle. Stewart, the kid from Seattle, off the heel, and yet another offensive rebound. Newton pumps it in. The iron unkind, and it's pulled down by McKnight. Davion McKnight, who had 20 yesterday, has failed to take a shot so far today. He may be searching for one now. He lost his dribble. And then lost it out of bounds. There is uh, Sean Miller. Looking defensively at his team as he makes his way. Earlier I talked to 
Bobby Hurley Sr., the legendary Naismith Hall of Famer, and I talked to him about the differences between this year and last, and he said it all changed for Danny last year at halftime of the Iona game. Until they won that game in the first round of the NCAAs, their confidence level was never going to get to where it would be the rest of the way. And he thought that that was something that's overlooked by a lot of people. I only led that game, by the way, by one at the break. And they turned it on and never let up in the NCAA. He would know better than most, his dad. Yep. And good defense that time by Usbach on Castle by Boy Shredder in the air. And they were able to take advantage of that defensive play in transition. Very beautiful interior passing from Usman to Enzi inside. Yeah, easy Enzi. Xavier with seven assists on nine field goals, and they lead by three. Klingon backing in against Usman, gives it up. Spencer. Great work by Oliveri, and a good shield by Claude to keep Newton off the glass. And right now, Three point line not being friendly to UConn, 2 4 11. That's an area also that Xavier had to pay a lot of attention to to get UConn uncomfortable behind the heart. Law, he is dynamite on those pull ups. Can't get that one to go. Newton clear. Oh, what a crossover by Newton. Loose ball again, and they are getting their offensive rebounds. Another one. You take a three, you get a long board, and they know where to be. Yeah, but not finding the range right now. Even that 0 for 6 UConn in their last six three-point attempts. But another possession, another opportunity. Castle walked on the ball fake against McKnight. Timeout. And they did not, Xavier did not make a trade in the first half yesterday against Butler. But since then, they went 0 for 8 in the first half yesterday. But since then, in the second half against Butler and today, they are a collective 10 of 21 from downtown. Well, you knock in threes, you get back. You get an open lane to be able to get some penetration, second shots. Unfortunately, that time, Xavier not able to cash that in. Long short-armed one, and then Green missed a makeable shot baseline extended. Caravan on a blow-by against Djokovic, but he recovered nicely. Castle for Johnson, and he's fouled. And let's go over to Christina. Yeah, that last Xavier huddle was all about controlling the glass. Sean Miller said to his players, guys, we can't leak out too many second shots. They're long rebounds, and it is everybody's responsibility. Seven offensive boards. He said we can't leak out again, uh, reminding the guys they got to control the glass here in the first half. Yeah, you know something, Jim? Yesterday, I thought Abu Uzma had a great day, all right? And they know that their front line is outmanned with Johnson and, and Klingon. It's important that, that Uzma and Djokovic hold their water, so to speak, in this game. Well, they, they have to because you don't want to give up second shot. Listen, in the game with Donovan Klingon didn't play from Xavier, Xavier was able to win the battle of the boards 42 to 30, but they only got 15 second chance points. Yeah. So when you have opportunities to get offensive rebounds, you want to cash those in. And now having, you know, playing it back in the lineup, very important that you don't give up the offensive rebounds. And UConn already has seven now, you know, in this first half. All again searching. He's such a great scorer. Feeling his way now, he notices Djokovic is open. He can hit that shot. As can Usman. As their as their confidence grows, their bigs are good face-up scorers themselves. And Usman with a rejection. Beautiful. Weak side help. Usman able to come and take away Castle. Uh, I was gonna oh, say wow. finish, but he hit the other side of the backboard on that shot. Uh, he worked so hard defensively, he forgot to spot up that shot. On the other end, on the offensive glass, Connecticut human pogo sticks, but they can't hit. A couple of missed opportunities in this first half for UConn, up close and personal, not able to finish. And uh, suddenly now, Xavier has gone cold from deep. Davion McKnight with a break. UConn, a four-minute field goal drought. And Xavier unable to take advantage of it. 
It slams him. Johnson. It's so tough to guard multiple exchanges with this UConn team. You got Tristan Newton coming off of the dribble handoff. And then it's Samson turning the corner where Usman is playing that drop coverage to not be able to take that away. Olivari. Oh, what a beautiful runner by Quincy Olivari, the Atlanta Georgia native. Out of Rice in the portal. S10 to lead the way for Xavier. A very good play. He put it in the bucket. Aragon, another extra pass. A beautiful entry to Johnson. And a foul that had to be given that time by Olivari. Well, watch right here, Usman, because he's in drop coverage. As this pitch and roll is going to happen, he's going to have to be able to inch up and have to guard. See, now he's playing in between Tristan Newton turning the corner, but then also has to protect the basket, and it's pretty difficult in particular if McKnight can't recover to cut off Newton. A lot of times you have either the runner open or that lob to Samson. Enzi checks back onto the floor for Xavier. Guzman sits down. Hassan Diara also checking back in. That's a good foul. When you think about it, don't give up the dunk. Put him on the line. See if McKnight can warm up. As we mentioned, he had 20 in the win yesterday against Butler. And they needed all those points. The Bulldogs played really well. It was close to the entire game. Lob inside to Djokovic. And the foul spotted inside by Clark. Emma Clark. Beautiful recognition that Djokovic had a smaller Cam Spencer. Djokovic walked him up the lane. The front was there. He presented his left hand. His guide hand to where he wanted the rock and a beautiful pass inside and trying to figure out when you do have an opportunity at a mismatch to take advantage of it that time. Excellent rec recognition by Xavier, but now you gotta make oh, you talk about living right. That was a touch of all bucket for Djokovic at the free throw line. At, uh, at that particular basket all day yesterday, what was it? Free throw line was uncommon to everybody. I don't know if it's ground tighter than the one over here. <laughs> Not only did I notice it, but our, our guru of stats, uh, Ethan Cooperson, has been all over. So, you know what? As a shooter, I'm, I'm not going to blame it on the rim. Yeah. I ain't doing it. I'm not, I'm not bailing, bailing the players out but from no. that respect. Well, as a broadcaster that couldn't play, I was always looking for excuses. Caravan drives in and picks up the foul. You know how that goes, right? I do know. I do know. <laughs> if not, you go let me know that I'm yeah. it, it, sort of like, there. Sort of like blaming the producer. <laughs> <laughs> he made me he do made it. He made me do it. <laughs> Cut too soon. Secret to success. <laughs> if advanced lung cancer has you searching for possibilities, discover a different first treatment. Well, he had 11 points in the final. 15 of that game yesterday already has 10 today and, and look there's no question that his confidence will not shatter if he misses a few shots that's not he, he gets amnesia as well as anybody as a shooting guard well listen John Miller said he's been a godson in regards to bringing his level of experience his scoring ability but he attracts so much attention that the defense has to kind of skew to his side that opens up some other Opportunities on the weak side for his teammates, and here he is on the baseline. Beautiful shot, good defense, not able to knock it in. Well, in that respect, he did that became a guard laden team as opposed to a low post with the loss of Hunter and Greenhouse. They needed him to step up the scoring responsibilities as Newton hits on a nice drive, and we're tied with 26. NZ with a high pick for Oliveri and a roll. And a foul inside yet again. Klingon with a nice job defensively, but in so doing, the help came from Spencer. And a foul committed by Alex Caravan, number 11 in white. Right, the drive. And then Caravan got caught right in the middle of that, of his help position. Beautiful recognition. And Enzi didn't stay married to kind of that Big East logo right there. He kind of bottled the ball, was able to pick up the foul. Only 50% of the line. He gets that one to go. You'll take a lot of free throws if you're a big playing for this uh, 
Xavier team necessarily, but boy, the Upper Darby, Pennsylvania native out of the George School has uh, served his team well. Both of his parents ran track in their native Nigeria. He gives him a one-point lead. Here he went out of the two. Spencer, perpetual motion. Gets that one to go. And once he sees it go through the net, look out. But, but you, if you jump, but you can't make the mistake of trying to undercut the screen. And that's what he did. Cam, Cam ran it perfectly, faded back just a little bit, was able to receive it and make the young fella pay. Well, he got swinging there for him. But he still was a factor, and it's out of bounds by Lindsay, and it belongs to Connecticut. Well, this is an area talking to Sean Miller with the young fella. Watch. Jokovic, as he, as he trails him here, look, he undercuts that screen. He said by being a young player, he has to be able to defend not just Spencer, but Caravan as well. That time made a mistake, and as you know, senior players, experienced players, players could make you pay. Now we talk so often about the middle eight, Jim. Xavier needs to finish the last two minutes plus well against Utah. Remain in contact by halftime. We know that they have this kind of ability on the offensive end. Klingon can't get it to go. That's a good defensive sequence, but it's out of bounds off of the Huskies. Yeah, but Klingon hasn't been on balance on a couple of his shots. That big frame, that time both of his legs were kind of together, didn't have the explosive nature of it. They missed eight layups, yeah. Connecticut. Eight bunnies. You see the three point shooting right here. Look at this. I mean, combined in two games, 28 to 53, UConn, 53 percent. So doing a better job, only three for 13 this afternoon. Claw on a step back. Klingon clears to Spencer. McKnight was reaching as he's trying to get through that pick. And it goes against McKnight. Number two on Davion. And Sean Miller uh, lobbying with Clark. About contact, I'm sure, through those picks. <laughs> so Danny Hurd said you wanted to set those picks. And Sean Miller talked about it too, setting picks. Yeah. And Uzman now picks up a foul on that lob. Not allowing Cleveland the chance to ring it up. Number two on Abu. And the winner of this game will advance into the semifinals as the Tri-State Area Day gets underway here on FS1. The Johnnies and the Hall. What a you know, rubber match that is, huh? It is. You talk about Big East basketball as finest. Well, think about it. A lot of tournaments don't see games with the, the intensity that we have on the quarterfinal round. They just don't. And we're getting a great one here today. And that's a game that most other tournaments wouldn't see until, oh, maybe Saturday. <laughs> St. John's and Seton Hall. That will be an incredible matchup with a lot at stake, particularly for Patino's team. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's, you know, Seton Hall sees himself pretty much in a good position for the tournament St. John's. you got to win it out in order to erase all doubt. And erase all doubt that McKnight going to his right was able to hit that shot up and over. Mark it down. He got his first bucket in the last minute of the first half because the cylinder might open up for him too. Well, but I, 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 I love his maturity that he hasn't forced the offense. And speaking of forcing, he's Tristan Duke just dissecting the defense. That's a two-man game, two guards in the pitch and roll scenario where Diara Diara was able to slip out in a bullet pass from Newton right inside. Yeah, he threaded it. UConn by two. Knight looking again. Oh, yeah. And he's fouled. Caravan came over, as did Spencer. Just as he wants to be at times, his mannerisms on the sidelines just fires up the opposing fan base. But when you're winning, yeah, that sprinkles a little bit more fuel to the fire sure. as well. Yeah. One of his running lines, because he knows his M.O., he'll say, well, look. I'm just crazy like every other Hurley. <laughs> and he knows he can say that because his father 
is a little bit nuts too. Well, how about this? I don't know. Last week I did the USC game with Bobby and then the UConn game with Danny back to back. Right. Spencer with a big three. Let's see if they can answer here as we go to break. In to end with a fadeaway. Oh, the iron kind to close the half. Count the basket here that they did then. Well, but also talking to our partner in crime, the ball, George, former coach, and now in the oh, studio yeah. show, he talked about the teams that have been successful against UConn have been physical. Now, by nature, Xavier is not, but I thought in the first half, they imposed a little bit more physicality, which allowed them to offset Klingon. But then once again, here's Utah coming off the screen, and here they get the easy shot inside. Now, you can bet Claude knows that He's been scoreless in the last 12 minutes, and here's a run out. Newton off the block shot. A quick bucket, and the Huskies out to a five-point lead to open the second half. Guess where it came from? The block of Cleveland, the quick outlet. Newton, one pass in transition. Layup for point number 10 for Utah. Djokovic gets it inside, and he's fouled. He was double teamed. Well, you want to execute a fast break, one, you get the stop, fling it right there, claw, not able to get it up and over. But once the ball is outlet, that's one dribble, head up, Tristan Newton is able to sneak behind the defense, which should not happen. In particular, Oliveri understands that the layup is going up on that end, that means you've got to get back, and that's an area, too, where Sean Miller said, listen, as a team, we're going to abandon trying to get offensive rebounds to get back in transition. But that time, didn't adhere to that and gave up a layup. A lot of times you look at the box score and you know a score is going to search for his points. Connecticut was well aware that Claude was going to shoot the first time he touched it. And they blocked it and got that quick out. Newton in traffic. He forced that one to lose by did a great job of staying put. McKnight wide open. It goes crying off the front iron. Castle, no one there. Loosebine came late. And I think Sean Miller's not happy. He's going to get a timeout quickly here. Coaching in the moment. Yeah. He hasn't demanded that he needed to start or he needed to grow. He needed the ball in his hands, but man, his maturity has paid off. Caravan just too tall and too wide for Claude to get around. Here's McKnight. If Claude's not hitting shots, then McKnight better stay hot. Caravan from way downtown. Usman brings it in. Claude's outside stroke is sometimes there, sometimes not. I think you have to get back to attacking like they did early against this UConn defense. Again, it's not, it's a lot easier said yeah, than done. Absolutely. Don't get me wrong. Run him off the three point line. Claude's got to pump it now from deep and way off the mark. But beautiful yeah, defense that time by Tristan Newton on Alabari. Mm -hmm. He cut off the baseline and forced him to go more north and south than east and west, meaning mm -hmm. towards the baseline. And that's when you talk about principle, defense, and discipline, and cutting off the baseline. Tristan Newton did an excellent job on that occasion. That great start for Xavier that got them the 10 0 lead. They were 8 of 14 to begin this game. Now they're under 40%. Four of the last 19 from the floor. And they're calling on their defense now as Caravan draws. 42 to 35, largest lead now for UConn. Yeah, another paint point. That kid, Caravan, because of the shooting, a little pump fake. Two dribbles, two feet in the lane. They've extended that defense, making every shot so much more difficult. Connecticut's putting the pants down. And the foul. As Newton was driving it to the 10. Well, he, here it is. The, the long closeout. Djokovic gave up middle drive and then through the contact, Caravan was able to finish. And look at the 
body, the shoulders of Djokovic right there out of context. And as Jared Bad said, he's a just a little small, yeah, a little young, a little small. We see the field goal shooting by half so far, and we said this before. Anybody that's playing as you've got team, if you expect to win, must score with them. And Creighton couldn't in one game, got blown up. Xavier couldn't, lost by 43. Defensively, you can only do so much against a team that's this balanced, so you better score. Well, the balance is the key because you kind of show that they can win when their outside shooting hasn't been a premium. Absolutely. Okay. They've yeah. had a lot of games where they've been off from the three-point line, but they've been able to dominate the paint, get to the free throw line, and get some easier opportunities. So we talked about it. All four UConn field goals in the game. A much welcome sign. By Oliveri right there. Nice little kick out for an open shot. Let's see if Xavier can use a little bit more to get a stop here on defense. As our friend Bill Raftery would say, needed it. <laughs> in a bad way. Yeah, right they there. needed that three ball. Huskies lead down to five. Strong from Spencer. Wingman couldn't catch up to him. Yeah, one of the few errors or miscommunication in regards to the pass from Spencer to Wingman. Oliveri has uh, too much room to keep from shooting that shot as Castle takes it inside, uses his body to make it a 45 38 lead. Yeah, but he uses patience to grab dribble right into the lane, didn't see the double team, but then used his height to take advantage of Oh, a carry is called. You don't see that often. But they called it, and Danny Hurley not at all happy about the fact that they did so. Oh, they needed that just to hang in. Today, there's a twist. Mm -hmm. The scoring margin for UConn, second half. Oliveri trying to reach in and get the pilfer, but Spencer off the curl. Critical time now for Xavier. I know it's early in the second half, but it is critical to maintain contact. Johnny has checked into the game. His first action did not play right yesterday. There's a scoop to the hoop that's slow. Djokovic trying to keep it alive. Wingen reels it in. Wow, that would have been a much needed play at that time. And as you kind of succumb to a little bit of pressure, even those layups right there, Become a little contentious and are not easy to convert. Great defense that time by Xavier. Numbers green hey. rejected. Huskies got the memo at halftime. Schools out. Missed the lob though. Yeah, but that time Klingon ran into Castle. So it was two of the same players going after him. Now Xavier finally able to get it. Four point swing right there. Yeah. That keeps him in it. Yeah, Klingon didn't see. Stephon Castle behind him. He probably thought the pass was coming to him. And that ball took Castle out of play. First points this half for Claude. It may open up his shooting from deep. Xavier needs it in the worst way. Spencer never got the shoulder square for that one. He had to get his legs up under you for me, but that time wasn't set in Claude. Claude attacking this tip. But on the deck. Lingen kept it alive. Green comes away with it. Oliveri was free, but Green didn't see. The shot clock didn't reset because it wasn't a possession for now 10 seconds under. Nice work by Chani to help keep that one alive. For this recycle opportunity for Green. Step back three. Here comes Castle the other way. Appreciate his talent, folks, because he may not be around very long. A steal by Olivari. Sloppy play here by both teams the last few possessions.
two turns in their last three possessions, UConn, and Oliveri cashing in. Quincy Oliveri. within five again. 15 for Quincy Oliveri today. Good composure. By Xavier, by the Musketeers, you'd be able to get some stops and then cut into this, and that's a tough pass inside. Ooh. He's blinking. And a deep ball from Newton. Came over from East Carolina. You can make a case that midseason a year ago, he might have been the exploitable Husky. No longer. He was a player of the year candidate all season long in 2024. Working on the freshman of the year. Arching off the window. He affected that shot defensively. And that's the second one Claude has got to his right hand, but not able to finish. Quick look by Newton. Well, they keep the floor balanced defensively, don't they? Yeah. They had a good day. Yeah. Just get back. Yeah, good good defensive transition that time to go. Two players around. Djokovic right there, and I see some winded legs on both sides right now because you're not completing some of these plays. Uh, trying to bring the house down with alley oops. Connecticut has uh, aided and abetted Xavier's ability to hang in there, trailing by eight now. Wow. Wow. That was deep. Almost from the, uh, the mid court. Yeah, almost from the uh, Empire State Shot Building. Shot right? Miller dropped his head. He just <laughs> arms under his hands were under his up armpits. Just kind of just dropped his head on that shot right there. Just say, like, don't just settle. And the foul inside. Chinese got some fouls to give. Pushing Klingon. Uh, you got to do some, do some little things a little. Newton's law able to get inside and get an easy two. And then on defense, Green must not have read the memo that Stephon Castle got some hops. And off of another offensive rebound, Tristan Newton able to knock it in. And Danny Hurley, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Woo, yeah. <laughs> A taller version of Drazen Petrovic. That is a great comparison. Yeah. It really is. Great. Newton lobbing again. Swanson strikes again. But the misdirection play. You got Trish, Tristan Newton coming from the weak side to get the ball. And then he goes back off the pick and roll. Samson sets and rolls. And number 20, baby, on McKnight. Well, this 10-point deficit now is a byproduct of 3 of 16 from the floor. Seven missed layups for Xavier. And the points in the paint are all with UConn. 14 to 2. Olivari looking for a lob, but this is danger zone for Enzi with Hampson in front of him. Up against the clock again, Green. These are stressful shots up against the shot clock. But beautiful rotation on the backside by Samson Johnson. When the ball was in the air, he was already on the strings to get there. And a lot of those missed layups by Xavier is due to outstanding defense like that or the presence of having Donovan Klinger kind of clogging up the lane. A classic case of what makes UConn so tough to beat. So many weapons, so many answers, a little high-low there. From Spencer to Caravan. Well, how about this? In the first half, points in the paint were 18 to 14. James Stewart enters for Connecticut. Right now, I think it's 14 to 2. It might be 16, 16 after, that last, after, after that last one. After that last one. Yeah. So when I talked about the mindset of Dan Hurley and what he wanted his team to get done this second half, yeah. was two feet in the paint were going to dominate inside. And we see that coming to fruition right now with paint points. Well, other teams like Xavier grow tired. There's some fatigue because their big guns have to play big minutes. Well, watch right here. Samson is going to be able to set this screen right here, okay? Which is going to be very important. Uzman, now, the wrinkle to that play you saw, watch Cam Spencer set that back string. Because yeah. that time, McKnight can't switch. Because if he switches, Cam is coming off for a handoff for a three-point shot. So you're talking about a beautifully drawn up, but more importantly, executed play that opened it up for that line. Jimmy Downey and I had the first meeting between Marquette and UConn. They were one and four. But back in late January, it was tied at 18. And then Edgar Donald got a second foul. They left, and they got blown away. They lost by 28. 
They met again at Godaro 17-16. He gets a second foul. They're playing without Kolek. UConn goes on a big run, gets a double-digit lead. To Marquette's credit, they made a run, made it a seven-point loss in the end. But you have to score with them. You can't stop scoring. And here we have a foul. Here's a challenge. They, they're so dynamic from a scoring perspective. Right. They have so many weapons. Most teams don't possess four shooters and a big man inside. Right. Guys that can score. So trying to go tip for tat sometimes doesn't work. What you have to figure out is how to maybe slow the game down a little bit. Give yourself a chance to get to the free throw line. Find easier ways to get basket, but trying to go tip for tat against a team that has the versatility of UConn from a scoring perspective. Yeah. Not too many teams in the country can yeah. do that. And that's why they blitzed the field in the NCAAs a year ago. You know, before they had Spencer, okay? With Jackson and company. In this league, you're so well scouted, there are teams that can handle you or at least know what's coming. Well, I said in the, the two losses, teams have been physical and made it tough on UConn. Yeah. They disrupted their timing in their offense. Yep. Okay? But there's only a few teams that can do that. And one thing UConn is really good at is adjusting to that. Right. Uh, Jalen Stewart picks up that foul. And, and again, here's a young man from Seattle, Washington, that is outstanding. All right? He is a big-time talent. And Dan is making sure he gets some minutes. Minutes have been hard to come by. For him, he's only averaging nine on the year. Any other team, he'd probably be playing 25 to 30 minutes as a freshman. Well, here's the challenge now with coaches today with the transfer portal and NIL is patience. Yeah. Before you were able to get some freshmen and say, we want to develop you over time, you have to be patient enough to understand that you have, you know, veterans in front of you. But now, the impatience sometimes of those freshmen lead to them transferring or sophomore. So your best recruiting as a coach now becomes retention of your own play. No doubt. No doubt. And how you can get that done. Make those nine minutes a game happy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Newton Lobs, cleaning in traffic. Yes, and a foul. Djokovic on his hip will pick it up. Well, because you have to help. Watch this play. Watch where Tristan comes from. Now, he has to help. Klingon is there, the drop coverage, and they identify where that mismatch is going to be. Meaning, Usman is, again, in drop coverage, so he can't do both. Yeah. And because you have a shooter in the corner, that defender can't inch in to get inside of Klingon, because if you do, it's going to be a pass skipped over the top to the corner for an open three. Quick correction, that was Claude that committed the foul, not Djokovic. He was on his hip, and that's number three on Claude, so he's got to be careful now on the defensive end. They can't afford to lose him. And Connecticut is in the grip of every musketeer in this second half. And a whole lot of dribbling for Xavier. Not all the passing. And many shots taken in stress. Claude with a runner. That is his game. He had a little room for the first time in a while. He's got 13. I don't see it. We've been seeing it. You get multiple stops. We've seen it in small spurts for Xavier. But you have to be solid defensively. you got to communicate early against all of this movement. Here it is again. Alleyou. Little strong. Beautiful adjustment by Klingon to go reversal because of where that lob went. 60-47. Twenty-one assists on twenty-four field goals, and that's a lot. David Stewart forcing Djokovic to put it up. Be able to get some of the easier opportunities, the lobs to the basket, and the second shots. But listen, they haven't played with it all year, so that they are who they are at this point. Again, we still got seven forty left. Can Xavier muster up? Every weakness gets exposed, and Usman upset that he picked up that foul off the ball. This got a little too physical with Klingon, and when you're undersized, that can happen. Chani will have to be called upon to come back onto the floor. Sasha Chani out of uh, Slovenia. Not a big scoring threat, but he can be physical, and he's got fouls to give. Spencer. 
Back to Clinton. You just can't stop that. Hey, listen. Look, you got to keep it simple. You know what I'm saying? I mean, don't go away from now. That tells you about the discipline also, but also not wanting to hear Coach Dan early enough either. Like, listen, this is what, this is what we're going to do. We're going to stay with this game plan of continue to put the pressure on David to, to stop us off the bounds and inside. Yeah, indeed. Look at that great defense by Saban Castle right there. Ah, and then Ucha comes away with one. Nemo. I think they're going to credit this some time. Yeah. 62 to 49. And again, it's huge that Xavier get every meaningful field goal they can to stay in the hunt against this magnificent Huskies team. High low, Spencer into Klingon. Drop step, hello. And, and you know, let me say this too. I'm going to give credit and Klingon scored that. Okay, but I'm gonna give credit to Stephon Castle for this. He didn't force that shot, even though he had a smaller guy. He kicked it out, and the advantage went to Clinton. So guess what? Instead of a forced shot inside, you got an easier basket by being patient, and that shows a lot about the level of maturity from Stephon Castle as a basketball player. And Clinton, after being benched about two minutes into the game, of ten nothing. Johnson came in for him. Now he scored the last nine points. Let's just say uh, he's moving down the floor like someone a lot smaller than his size. And that's what Danny Hurley wants. The lead is ballooned to 15. Huskies have made their last eight, six, I beg your pardon, from the floor. They're in the rhythm now. Djokovic wide open. Every loose ball opportunity going their way as well. Spencer, oh yeah. Klingon has 11 points in the last three and a half. And Xavier now just trying to hang on. Get a bucket when they can. And then try to win the last four minutes. The fact that Miller didn't call a timeout, I think, tells you that. At night, that shot was all through by the seven foot. You see the defense, not a gap open when you thought, Xavier, you had a clear lane. Oh, are they a machine? Castle takes it to the top one more time. The patience pays off and because look at this movement now you're going to the weak side Claude does a good job of cutting Stefan Castle off, but the tight handle the tight spin move Abel's castle Not only to pick up the basket but get the foul as well And a well-oiled machine it took a little bit to kind of shake off the rust of starting a little Behind the eight ball gets his Xavier yeah. team an early game. Yeah. Xavier had advantage. Uh, did you see that Oliveri coming out of the game? Sean Miller's already thrown up the white flag. He got seldom used. A seldom used player onto the floor. Brandon Holbrook, the freshman, and then Hurley goes over, finds Oliveri, and gives him a hug. So, yeah, he said, you know what? We got to see you anymore. That's right. <laughs> You know, and that points in the paint story is now 30 to 4 UConn in this half. But let me say this too. And let me you know, say this. Just coaches understand and respect players that go at it and go hard. And by the way, you know what I mean? Yeah. When we opened the show, I was talking about the only change in this UConn team being the fact that Dan Hurley is so much more comfortable. Because his skin is thicker now, he knows well, that he's coming. He knows thing. his reputation. Oh, no, he got the heavy yeah. thing on his finger. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> that ring. Absolutely, and that's a byproduct of it. Respecting your opponent while you're beating them badly, and he knows all of Barry's a big time talent, and he gave him the appropriate hug on the way out because he knew Sean Miller was throwing up the white flag. Well, but speak about talent. This savior team is poised. 
to be well, that's what call it all beautiful pass wow. once again and you know not letting off again. let me finish this to that with green with mg with jokovic with claude the cupboard is not going to be fair and the young freshman got thrown into the fire they've learned to play real-time situations which Indeed. will help them ultimately next year right absolutely 75 to 49 and uh, this game was in doubt at halftime folks it was they put you in such a pickle because they have such depth and eventually your legs wear out that's what they're going for yeah they got the end. this team kind of playing kind of basketball you want to just listen be seven seven on the road in a conference where you got 11 new faces yeah i mean yeah you know it's it's, it's hard enough when you have a familiar team with each other right. to be 500 on the road let alone madden the job that shaheen has done with his team kind of the both teams have had roller coaster years but they started out well hit a slump came back lost a couple but the thing that helps their metrics seton halls mm -hmm. is that early win against connecticut after the Huskies lost to Kansas and that the metrics are so good for them They don't need it quite as much as st. John's, but I'll be interested in what the course he has to say If st. John's were to lose that they still may have a good shot but We'll see yeah, but you know the challenge is too have been around this a long time to be Is somebody out there gonna steal the field? Yeah, you know yeah. How about that? Huh? Just uh Check back into the game and Rule of Blue gets it done. Everybody getting into the act in the box score. Olivari checks back in. You want to get a little more play time. Well, this is he's a grad senior. Yeah, it's a last goal around here, so Sean is yeah, allowing him at this point. Maybe he wants another hug from Danny. <laughs> I love that moment. I thought it was so respectful of both of them. I think he's coming out the game. Yeah. Uh, maybe give them an opportunity to give them an ovation. The Xavier people. I think you should sure appreciate that young man. Sean Miller does. But it's a long walk yeah. to the bench because in your mind, you envision yourself winning this game and moving on. And then when reality hits you, it ends so suddenly, right? It ends, and it's just over. In particular, it's not like you said, I'm coming back next year. Uh, he's going to be on a different path, but I tell you what, very much appreciated by that coaching staff, the program, the fans there, Xavier, what he was able to bring to the table. Now, we talk so often about the Connecticut culture. Xavier's got one, too. No one knows that more than Sean Miller and... Listen, I'm sure he's thinking what Danny Hurley was saying a couple of years ago. You better get us now because the cavalry is coming. Well, I'm from Ohio, so you know I know all about yeah. Xavier basketball and what it means to that university. Connecticut now starts to like I said, the cover is not there. This first 50 there with those young, talented players. It's just a matter of filling out the rest of that roster, being healthy. Colbert from downtown. Oh, good for that kid. Good for him. Yeah. Hey, Colbert didn't hesitate. He, yeah. They called the play. He knew he was going to get it. He got those puppies set and yeah. said, you know what? I'm letting it go. The former Louisville walk-on knocks it down for the Musketeers. Good for him. That's a good hair on him. He does. Colbert is. Nice pun. Love it going yeah. on a little bit. Yeah. And Herm to go with it. Fluffy. <laughs> Yeah, that look would have worked in the 70s. Yeah, right. Yeah. See, that's when you're really comfortable with who you are as a, as a young man. When you, when you rock that, when you rock that hairstyle, and are like, look, bro, this is who I am, and this is how I get down. This is what I do. Watch Cobra come off. Good pick by Enzi. Set his feet. Beautiful arch. Oh yeah, hair flowing. Look at it flowing. Yeah. A little wind inside the. 
breeze inside the MSG. Uh, uh, fans of UConn are standing up as Rumaglu comes out after hitting that big three. Number 33 gets a standing ovation. And here's Colbert with a pilfer. And the deuce. And the Musketeers and every fan that's not coming in here from stores. Happy to respond. That's great basketball IQ from the fans of the Big East. Uh, quick answer. Well, I think, too, they want to try to get Andrew Hurley. Hey, it's a, a shot. Yep. Solomon Ball with his first three. Nice pass to Djokovic, too. An assist for Colbert. Djokovic's going to be good. Yeah, he's yeah. going to be good, man. I think that's one of the guys you think of when you say, you better get him now. Oh, yeah? Right? Uh-huh. Come on, Andrew. Let's see if you can get FGA. <laughs> You know what's good for you. You find Andrew, get him a shot. <laughs> by, the, by the way, look at that. Magnificent move. And a quick timeout here from Connecticut. Now, Fisher, he found a wet spot, Jerry. He did. Abney on the weak side. There we yeah. go. That's right. Just a so he's doing double duty. He cleaned up the spot. He stopped the play. By the way, didn't you think it was great that the last point made that gamble this year came from a hurry <laughs> at the line? That was fun to see. Here we go. Yeah. Give it to him on a trip. Yeah, we'll give it to him. <laughs> We're over here hoping for it. Andre Jackson will dribble it out. Hurley will get to touch it on the floor at the Garden, but he won't get the last point. They trailed 10 to nothing, and then it was UConn, UConn, UConn.